good morning, happy Sunday. It's a glorious Sunday, it's cool. It's in the 40s, feels like 41 I think it said. But it's nice, it's not, it's not damp and windy like some days. Whatever, Tracy. <laughs> All the time. Charlie used to roll around in the yard and she roll, she does this on the driveway. I'm not worried about when she does it here because she doesn't pick up those smells like she did when we were up at the salon. She had found something. Apparently there was smells left behind. Ugh. But I'm not worried about the driveway rolling. I've got to go to the grocery store today and I just don't want to, you know? Why do we have to do these things? I don't like to order my groceries and pick them up because they charge more for them. Well, at least at Publix they do because I went and bought groceries and I came home and I then went on line and checked every price that I paid against what was online to pay. And it was like, 40 to 50 cents more per item because you have to pay people to do your shopping for you that so that's included in the price of the food that's what I found at my Publix yours may be totally different but yes line by line every item was 40 to 50 cents more and, it, and that makes sense to me because, like I said, you got to pay people to do your shopping for you. They're not going to do it for free. Please stand by. Okay, hi, it's me again. <laughs> I'm on the way to Publix. No, no church today. They have what they call home church once a month, and you go to people's homes. I get why they do it. I don't like it. I could, well, I used to do it at my old church. But I knew everybody there. And I know it's a good way to get to know people, but I don't even know enough people. You know what I'm saying? I know Kim and I know Shelly. Well, and I kind of know Linda and George, but they don't live near me. They go to home church way out in Hiram, which depending on where they are, could take me 45 minutes to get there. There's no traffic. What in the world? Well, today's memories, I love looking at my memories. Do y'all do that? Today's memory, six years ago today, is when I went and picked up Penelope from my friend Susie. So I had put on Facebook that I was looking for a small dog for my mother, my mother, and Susie replied that she had one that she needed to get rid of because she was working 12 to 14 hours a day and little Penelope was staying locked in the little bathroom. So she wanted her to have, you know, more space to run around. So I should have known when I walked into that little apartment to get Penelope that she had the attitude that she has because she was barking at me and growling at me and she didn't want nothing to do with me. And then Susie just handed her to me and we paid Susie like 250 bucks for her. And I turned around and walked out and put her in my car and she never growled or barked at me again. Growled or barked? Yeah, barked. Mm -hmm. I was like, did I just say the same thing twice? Anyway, I took her to my mom's. My mom fell in love with her. She loved to sit and brush her and all like that there. So that was today in 2017 and then in July of 2019 Penelope came to live with me because she 
was acting out against the nurses who were coming in. <laughs> like, they couldn't even approach the bed. And I get that she was being protective of my mom, but we didn't want her to bite any of them because she would. <laughs> so, she came to live with me and she's been with me the longest of any parent. But, including her birth mom, the breeder mom, I'm her fourth mom. So it's no wonder she has a few issues, which is also why I'm so very protective of her. All right, I'm going in. I'm going in to Publix. Pray for me. It's not that bad. Okay. You know, when the, the Rachel Dunn stuff first came out, you know the Rachel Dunn stuff that's got the name of everything on everything. You know what I'm talking about? When it first came out, I was like, I know this is a cup. You don't have to write cup on it. You know what I'm saying? But then I thought, you know, it's a little cute. Okay. Now this is not Rachel Dunn. This is Joanna Gaines. Sugar. Sugar. You see that brown top? Sugar. Okay, and then, as a Christmas present, I got salt and pepper. See the white top? <laughs> They're different for a reason, so that you know that's sugar and this is salt and pepper, right? The salt's over here. Salt, pepper, sugar, brown top. Well, <laughs> Can I just tell you, don't look at any mess you see, okay? Because I am in the middle of a process of elimination, okay? Anyway, in case you're wondering, if you put a spoonful, a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. If you put a spoonful of sugar in your potatoes that are boiling, it doesn't really change the taste of it. I just wanted you to know that in case you're wondering, in case you've ever wondered, does it really change the taste if you put sugar instead of salt? No, because apparently the potatoes absorbed the sugar like it does the salt. So after a few minutes, after I had put it in there and kind of stirred it around a little bit, I was like, Wait a minute, that had a brown lid. That was sugar that I just put in my potatoes. So I just went ahead and added the salt. When it was done, I could not taste the sugar. So don't throw the potatoes away if you make the same mistake as me. Now, typically I leave my sugar over here by the coffee cups and the coffee maker, you know, the coffee bar here. It's not really a coffee bar, but yeah. And I leave the salt and pepper over there by the stove because typically that's where I use salt and pepper. I don't typically use sugar over there. I don't know how they got mixed up. Probably because I was over here. I don't have a lot of counter space, like work space. I have this little area and that little area, and that's it. So I was probably doing something over here. Anyway, I just wanted y'all to know that. That's a public service announcement. If you put sugar in your potatoes, eat them anyway, because you're not going to know it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Other than that, I've got laundry going. That's, oh no, I've got laundry going. And y'all are gonna hear my laundry. Oh, the horror, the absolute horror. Oh, and in here I have the TV going. Don't listen, don't listen. I don't want no copyright strike because the TV's going. Let me come over here and hit the moot button. I used to work with this woman. Oh, that light's bright. I bought new bulbs. I used to work with this woman, very educated woman. She was a major. A major, which is pretty high up. Deputy Sergeant, Lieutenant, sometimes Captain, depending on who's in charge. Sometimes they have Captains and sometimes it goes straight to Major, Colonel. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty far up there. And 
she would always say, it's a mute point. And I was like, it's not, <laughs> it's not mute. It's moot. It's moot. It's a moot point. You are mute when you are not speaking aloud. Or I can hit the mute button so you can't hear me. Yes, that's mute. That's a mute point. <laughs> or a moot point. Sometimes I say it wrong just to be funny, but... Darlena sent me a message last night and said that, oh my gosh, I can't remember it. Hold on. Alrighty. <laughs> anyway, Darlena sent me a message last night and said to watch All the Light We Cannot See on Netflix. Have any of you seen it? It's good. It's real good. It's only four episodes. I don't know if more episodes are going to come out. I kind of hope so. Because I wasn't really happy with the ending. <laughs> it's good enough to watch, though, even though I wasn't happy with the ending. But, you know, I kind of hope it comes back. And Anyway, I don't want to give away too much. But, basically, it's during World War II. And the it's... I think they're in France. I know the young girl is from France. And then the Nazis came in. Anyway, she's blind. And her father built this really cool depiction. Depiction? Does that, did I just throw out a big word that I'm not sure if I used it correctly? He, he designed a little town with little houses. And he taught her when they moved to this new place, which I think was his, blah, 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 was with his aunt, I think. But I may have been half paying attention to some parts of it, because that's what I do. But he drew, he he designed this little town, and they had little bitty houses, and he would teach her how to, by using this little town, go out. And how to turn and when to stop and wait for the light or, you know, whatever. Uh, to cross the street and to walk to the bakery and then how to get back. You know, he taught her different ways to get places in the town. It was really cool. And his uncle lived in the house with the aunt. It wasn't her husband. It was her brother. And... He always stayed up in the attic because he had uh, PTSD, basically, before they called it PTSD, from when he was in the war, which I guess was World War One, and he stayed upstairs in the attic, which, can I just say, I would love to have an attic like that. I've always dreamt of having one of those beautiful walk-up attics that it's all open and you can store all your extra stuff up there, but it's not like mine where you have to pull down the rickety stairs and you're afraid to go up the stairs because you're afraid that's going to be the last time that anybody takes those stairs and the whole thing's going to fall out of the ceiling. Yes, that's on my list to replace when I get the monies. <laughs> There's a lot of things that I need, I need and want to replace when I get the monies. Also, a lot of things I want to build and tear down. Tear down is trees. Build is like a garage or even a carport. But everything is so expensive here. Everything is so expensive. It was just a really good feel-good mm, series. Uh, I started to say movie, but it's not a movie. It's a series, but it's only four episodes. So y'all check it out if you're Netflix people. And with it being war-based, I wasn't sure that I was going to like it when it first started. I was like, eh, but it was really good. It was really interesting. And it kind of made you feel like you were there in it, you know? And I can't imagine being there with all the bombing and all the, you know, I can't, I guess, you know, because I've lived here my whole life, I can't imagine being in a place that there's just bombing everywhere and fires everywhere and you're just in your house with no electricity and no food and you know what I'm saying? 
It, it's really good though, because you just kind of feel like you're in the moment. Oh, Penelope's growling. I think I've already said this, but today's her gotcha day. Yeah, I already said that in the car. I put on the um, on my Facebook page that what a blessing she is, but we won't discuss her bad habits. And a couple of people said she doesn't have bad habits, and I beg to differ with you. <laughs> Because I, I have her because of her bad habits, because she tried to decease the nurses. And yes, that is a bad habit when someone can't come into your home for fear of being bitten. And she went after my friend Trina's face after, after Trina held her in her lap and Penny allowed her to pet her. She jumped at her face. Yes, so she does have bad habits. I still love her. I do. She's my bestest girl in the whole wide world, but we all have bad habits. Yeah, don't we, Penny? Say, so we all have bad habits. What's your bad habit? What's my bad habit? My bad habit is sugar. Mm, yeah, my bad habit is sugar. I love, I love me some sugar. <sighs> like in my tea. I don't sit and eat a lot of just like junk, candy bars and ice cream. Well, I mean, dairy free ice cream. I don't sit and eat a lot of that stuff. My issue is is in my sweet tea. Mm. But, you know, we all got to have a vice, and I guess that's mine right now. So, anyway, <laughs> that's it for this moment. I'm going to see how long this video is, and I'll be back. Are you stuck? You got up there and you can't get back down? Huh? You want to go outside? You may pull the chair out. <laughs> I guess the chair was out. And she jumped up there. And then I didn't know she was there and I pushed the chair back in. Yeah, didn't you? You got stuck, didn't you? Come on. Come on. Okay, hold on. All right, come on. Come on. Come on. All right, there you go. Okay, okay, except, okay, except you're too far. You're too far. <laughs> that's not, that's not what was supposed to happen. I know you're, okay, you're going to have to get off on the table because that's not how that was supposed to go. We've done this a million times. You're only supposed to get on my shoulder. Come here. You're not supposed to be on the table anyway. <laughs> Well, anyway, that's going to be it for this one. <sighs> Remember that I love you and Jesus loves you and I hope he's coming back soon because people be crazy. Hit the like button or comment or both. I love both, but I'll take either. And remember, uh, yeah, I've already said all that. I I'm trying to find something to put in the middle of the table. That's what I'm busy doing right now. But anyway, okay, have a good rest of your day. Okay, bye.